three days to go until the coronation, where the world will watch the crowning of King Charles at Westminster Abbey. Well, it's been confirmed that Prince Harry will be there while Meghan stays in California with their two children. Now, there's been many headlines written about Harry's attendance, from what part he will play in the ceremony to how long he will stay in the UK. Well, Harry and Meghan's biographer and royal reporter, Omid Scobie, joins us now. And it's lovely, always lovely to see you. Thank Thanks you for, for having me back. I mean, you say you're not a friend, but my goodness <laughs> me, you, are, you have the inside track on all of this. I've got good sources. You really do, <laughs> and some suspect that it might actually be them. Um, so... <laughs> Definitely not true. But... <laughs> um, so, what, what's your view? Let's start first of all with the with the actual coronation itself yeah. and what it means, and your view of the way the king has organised it. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about the sort of modernisation of this coronation ceremony, but it is an ancient ritual. It goes back to 1066. So many elements of it literally hark back to that time. And so I don't think we're going to see much or feel much of that kind of modernisation that perhaps has been trumpeted in some of the papers. But of course, there are those small touches that the king brings. I love the fact that the, the anointing oil is now cruelty free. It used to come from Wales. Mm -hmm. And now it's from olives. That's the animal, not the place. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's the small things like that, but of course the rest of it is all about history. The robes that he wears, uh, King George VI, the stone underneath the throne dates back to 1066. So all of those great elements, and of course the jewels, the regalia. But you, you feel like that actually the lead up to this of what you've seen, that the focus is slightly different to where it's possibly yeah. been in previous coronations? You know, I think in the past, certainly for like Jubilee moments or any kind of big royal events, we're not just excited about the celebration or the historic moment, we're also excited about the person that we're about to celebrate. So with the Queen, with the Jubilees, we wanted to kind of, for her to have that moment, we wanted to see her. For the weddings, we wanted to celebrate the union of two people that we were really invested in. I think with this, we're excited about the historical moment and what it means for this country and obviously with the world watching mm -hmm. us. I don't get the sense that people are excited about Charles himself, and a lot of the polls seem to reflect that. Um, I mean, I, I, I think uh, a lot of people think he's got a very tough job mm. to follow the, the very, very long reign of, uh, of the Queen. Um, and, of course, there is all the other issues, the family issues that surround this, and, uh, and you say that Harry would always have been there. Yeah, absolutely. I think there was never any question about whether he would want to come or not. It was a question at one point of whether he'd be invited, I think. You know, from what I understand, the Sussexes had to wait for some time to really get that confirmation that they were 100% welcome mm. at this event. Of course, this all follows the release of Spare. But for Harry, there was certainly no question about it. Ultimately, he's fifth in line to the throne. He's a councillor of state. There's a serious constitutional reason for him to be here and he still takes that seriously even though he's not a working member of the royal family but also as we've heard from him time and time again in his interviews despite the pain that he's experienced from his own family he still cares for them mm. and you know time so much can happen over time and i don't think he'd ever want to look back and regret not, not being, being here for that moment. So when, when he is here, I mean, there's been rumours he may pull out, but it doesn't look like he, no. he said he's going to be here, he'll be here. Um, what will his involvement be? I mean, what will his role be? Will he have a role? His role to be is to be here. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, there's nothing carved out in the ceremony for him. And I would imagine if Harry and Meghan were working royal still and everything had worked out differently, there may have been some way for them to have been orchestrated into it, or at least to be visible on that big balcony moment later on after the ceremony. But obviously, that's not the case. And now people are wondering where Harry will be. Will he be with the sort of, with the civvies? Or will he be with his family members? And if he is, what row will he be in? And I think people will be watching to see, see that almost as a reflection of where he stands with his family today. So but he it. gets no say yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, is there, has there been very much contact within the family, with his father or with his brother mm. or with other members of the family? Obviously, this is the first time he sees his family face to face since the release of Spare, but I don't think people know that there has been a somewhat regular sort of pattern of conversation between him and his father since the release of that book. Now, 
Have they discussed the details and the points that he wanted to go into? From what I hear, no. But he has had contact with his dad. And, of course, there have been some negative moments with the loss of Frogmore Cottage. You know, they lose the keys to that any week now at this point. And, of course, he will have spoken to his father about that, but he also discussed his attendance at the coronation with his dad and made it clear that he wanted to be part of it. And I think that was really well received as well. So it's interesting to now compare that to where William and Harry are, which mm. is still in the exact same place that we last saw them. They There's been spoken. minimal contact since the Queen's funeral. And, and so what about Meghan then? Because we know she won't be attending. She's going to be staying at home. Mm. I think it's Archie's fourth birthday on the same yeah. day, so she's going to have her work cut out for her there. Um, it, when she came back for the funeral, I mean, even her presence there was criticised. Do you think she's just in a space now where she's like, I've got my happy place, I'm better off here, yeah. I'm staying away? People around the Sussexes guided press at the time that this was very much about Archie's fourth birthday. I disagree with that to some extent because I also know from friends of hers that she's protecting her peace as well. She is aware of how sort of much of the spotlight goes on her when she sets even a foot near yeah. the story. And I think a lot of that, although it's often portrayed as intentional that she wants to steal the spotlight, but in this case, should she have simply come over and stood next to her husband? I would imagine the commentary and the narrative on the day would be very different for the days that followed. Mm. Do you think mm. some of the members of the family are quite relieved that she's not there? I would say so, and I would put it down to the fact that so much of the attention then goes on someone who they would rather the attention didn't go on to. And if you look back at some of Harry and Meghan's biggest problems, it was all down to the fact that everyone was always talking about them and the attention was on them at times when it shouldn't have been. Do we know how long he will stay? Is this a pretty fleeting visit? Yeah, sources close to Harry say that it's in and out. Right. So it's to attend the ceremony and do what's asked of him. And I believe that he's open to the fact that if something's asked of him on the day, then that could change things. But the timings of the trip, he's keen to be back in California with his own family as well. It's sort of juggling the two families, mm -hmm. really. I mean, he's still close to some members of the family. There are, there are members who he doesn't have an issue with. Yeah. And I'm assuming, he, will he be seated uh, near them? Uh, so that's a sort of safe group of people? You would hope that someone has taken that into account, that maybe he's with the, with the York girls, with Beatrice and Eugenie, people that he can have non-uncomfortable conversations with, so it doesn't look so stilted and awkward on camera, because, of mm -hmm. course, we're all going to be watching. And, I'm thinking of the Commonwealth Service in 2020 when we saw uh, William and Kate and Harry and Meghan yeah, and right. Sophie and Edward and it was very frosty and I think that the Palace are really keen not to have a repeat of that moment because it doesn't look good for anyone. Um, so when you see all of this and you suddenly realise that how much thought goes into <laughs> yeah. this whole process just to make the actual everything is perfect. Looking to the future and the direction that the monarchy is headed in, what do you see for its future? I mean, I think we're entering a sort of uncertain, almost sort of rocky stage for the institution now. There are people in the majority who still believe in the power and the, the purpose of the royal family, but there are also many people who are now questioning. Questioning because they feel comfortable now that that sort of invisibility shield that the Queen had around the royal family and because of our respect for her, we didn't dare question anything. Now people will feel more comfortable to ask, well, what's the relevancy? What's the purpose? And of course, you look at polling amongst young people as well, they feel either against or completely indifferent. And so that's the challenge now for King Charles and the other royal family members mm. to unite the nation mm. in some kind of positive feeling towards the royal family. It does family. feel like there's a lot of positivity. I mean, you yeah, drive course. through the city, you drive through uh, villages, like, you can feel the build-up to the Definitely. coronation. I mean, there is a lot of goodwill and a lot of excitement there. I, I, I think a lot of emphasis has gone on, are people excited about the coronation or not? And mm. I think people forget that we have always said we're not excited about royal events right up until, like, the day of, and then suddenly we're out in the streets... Yeah, waving our bunting and all the rest of it. Yeah. So I think that 
it is sort of perhaps a British thing to say you don't care, but then, of course, on the day, you'll be glued. And I think there's an element of that. Too. What do you think of this um, homage of the people? Lambeth Palace mm. hoped that there was going to be a great uh, cry around the nation and the world in support of the king. Is it, is it a good idea to, to flag that up? I think... For it to be part of the service itself as a sort of repeat after me, should you wish, moment, it's expected. I mean, it's a Church of England service. There's always a kind of moment of, like, repeating a, a sentence or a word or a phrase or something. So, But I think the way in which it was flagged up as this kind of modern moment, that this is no longer an opportunity just for the privilege, but mm. for everyone in the UK and across the Commonwealth. And I think people... Firstly, it's not within our nature to sort of pledge our allegiance to anything, so it feels a little alien. Mm. But I also think that what's unusual for the royal family is that they've given the British public the, the, the opportunity to decide whether they want to be for or against something to do with them. And we really ever get, rarely get that option. Mm. And we've seen a resounding no come from the public, even from people that feel really passionately about the royal family. So mm. it was definitely a blunder. And I think within the palace, there's a lot of blame that's gone on Lambeth Palace and the Archbishop mm. for sort of highlighting that in the press material. Well, hopefully those waves of God Save the King will echo down oh, I have no Westminster doubt. Abbey. And... I have no oh, there'll be a lot of that. Yeah. This is OK. It's going to be an amazing okay. day. Part of history. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.